Let's talk about a story that seems to have essentially broken satire, I think it's mm. fair to say. Uh, 1984 is the world's most famous dystopian novel about the dangers of censorship, and the University of Northampton has slapped a trigger warning on it, warning students that it, it contains explicit content and scenes they might find upsetting <laughs> and offensive. True. <laughs> Tom, what have you made of this? It's, I, I'm still not convinced someone didn't make this up. You know, I'm, wait, I'm <laughs> well, waiting yeah. for it to turn out that someone's got, just got a bit carried away um, at some new, online news desk. But no, it seems to be the case. Um, it shows that there's no sense of irony, probably no uh, general, uh, you know, depth of understanding of literature amongst some of these people. I think one of the things that's interesting about it is that trigger warnings used to be really presented by their defenders as this is basically almost like a therapeutic psychological type intervention. Yeah. It's about people who might have experienced sexual assault, extreme mm. racist experiences. You don't want to trigger that trauma and therefore you put this trigger warning on it. This is just parental advisory stickers now. <laughs> like there's no, you know, there's no kind of yeah. alternative to that. And it, I, but what I think it it's, uh, reveals is that it has kind of always been that in mm. one way, shape or form. Firstly, because any of the sort of literature on whether or not these things were actually effective, people who are genuinely sort of traumatised, uh, was always suggesting that if anything, probably made matters worse. Yeah. Um, but also because they've always just served that function of saying, of problematising a book, you know, of presenting it as something dangerous. It's not to say that I think, you know, the University of Northampton bureaucrats who have done this necessarily think that 1984 is a, is a terrible, evil, problematic novel, yeah. but they just have such a degraded view of individuals that they that they think everything's kind of potentially upsetting and problematic, really. So, yeah, it's just it's it's just a reflection, I think, of in what such low esteem that kind of students are held, I guess, and people in general, that they feel the need to, even where this book is concerned, <laughs> without any shred of irony, slap a warning on one of these things. I mean, Charlie, isn't this the book that all woke students should read and maybe have a glimmer of self-realisation well, as they flip through the pages? Well, right, exactly. And as Brendan said in his, his column for Spiked On This, you know, lots of people bought 1984 after Trump was elected, <laughs> yeah. thinking yeah. this will explain the evil man who's in charge. Got a few pages in and thought, oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> Who do I think I am? <laughs> but I mean, like, every now and again, I see a story in the news and I think, well, this will make Fraser and Tom's day. Yeah. But this one, I think, might actually cause Spike to fold. It's so like on the nose. It's so <laughs> Where can beyond. we go from here? Yeah, no, yeah, what's, yeah, exactly. left, uh, what's left after this? Peak um, woke. What is, uh, you know, quite concerning about this, beyond the kind of insanity and the obvious kind of satirical element of it, is that I don't know if it was asked for by students. In fact, yeah. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm convinced it wasn't. I mean, Tom, you rightly note that this is the, a low view people are seeing students in. They, they see them as kind of shrieking fairies who mm. need to be protected from problematic content. But I don't know if any students requested this. Mm. And it's often the case that they don't. Yeah. And it is administrators and senior academics who are reacting against a, a market condition they think exists, but actually doesn't really. Yeah. And they put these things in place preemptively. They don't think... Um, oh, maybe we'll let the students read this book and see what they think. They nervously panic. And they think, let's go through this entire curriculum, see what covers any problematic themes and <laughs> trigger warning panic. Um, and this has clearly come up in that way. I think almost certainly that's what's happened here, yeah. as is often the case with these warnings. Yeah, and they haven't singled out 1984. You know, they mm. chose other books like... Yeah, you know, of course. Um, Curious Incident of the Dog in the Night Time. Definitely, definitely. I think reading they chose her. Jane Eyre as well, if I'm right. Bronte. Yeah, yeah, Bronte. yeah they chose Charlotte Bronte. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's she ever done? Anyway. <laughs> and some of that, but that is the kind of cl the classic problem, isn't it? We've, mm -hmm. you know, we've talked about campus censorship for years and we've never argued. People might character, caricature mm. our argument as this, but we have Bashing never argued whatever, yeah. that we are against students, that mm. all students are, you know, snowflake, crybabies. Mm -hmm. that, that's never been the case. It's always been either a minority of students mm -hmm. or university administrators assuming that other students can't deal with this. Yeah, no, completely. That's, all, that's always definitely been the case. I think the difficulty is, is that for whatever reason, that... Um, conception of students as being really sort of just weak really in, in need of all of this sort of therapeutic like scaffolding isn't it even as they go through their university life it has just sort of won the day i mean mm. you would think that universities still had like in loco parentis responsibilities or whatever the way mm. they treat students mm, right. but for all kinds of different kind of cultural and political reasons that is sort of how young people are viewed and they're invited to behave in that fashion as well so even though as you say it's a minority you then just have a lot of kind of political um, kudos given to people who will go around saying this book, this speaker, this whatever really upsets and unpersons me and, yeah. you know, um, all this sort of stuff. Because again, that is the view that rules on campus. So they'll give in to that kind of demand, therefore again, burnishing this idea that that's what students are like. And, and there are loads of fads, of course, 
that take place politically and the kind of the cycle that students will, will lap up and mm. reuse. But the one constant throughout all of that in the last well, best part of a decade has been mental health activism. That has been the one consistent concern that, is, yeah. that every mm -hmm. student generation has had in the last decade. And so you will always find this therapeutic language used to justify censorship, yeah. concern, a steadying of life. And actually um, the removal of stress mm. from life. And if that book makes you stressful, then it's got to go as well. I, mean, I remember my first year at Edinburgh, um, aromatherapy being offered on my second <laughs> week. Like I should like get sniffing salts for attending lectures or some <laughs> madness. And, and that's when I realized something really was quite awry. But, you know, that that level of concern and that kind mm. of duty of care, mm. that kind of mentality will be at the heart of all of these concerns.